Well, I have to apologize because in some of my previous videos, I had a pictures of cankles. Remember Hillary? Ah, cankles. So instead of, uh, I know some people are getting grossed out by cankles. So we're going to have Ivanka Trump as the introduction to this video. And you can't argue with this hot babe. I'll tell you for sure. You know, if she was running for president, I'd probably vote for her on looks only. God. Anyway. <laughs> The only thing wrong with this picture, she needs twin Confederate flags behind her, right? Anyway, showing that you're really for limited government. So, on with the quest for uh, going down the road here. The, uh, you know, there's one thing I'm going to have to give you to you like this, because you can give all the charts and analysis there is out the yin-yang, and there's a lot of things you can play with games with statistics. You can make things look certain ways. You can make things look bad or good, no matter how which data you want to pull out. Like if you're going to a bank for a loan and you're an entity, you want to make things look really rosy. You want to show, you know, your projected pro formas, your return on expected return on investment, and you know you want to show your strongest points and you know maybe the goodwill of the company. Now, if you're on the opposite side, you know you want to maybe, you know, if you're buying something, you want to point out how bad this could be a situation for me so you can lower the price so i mean you know when people put out a lot of things on these videos with uh silver and they're showing all these charts and stuff i mean i could put those out but i don't like doing that actually to tell you quite truth i, I really which i use is like the eye of satan basically satan you know s-a-t-a-n because i know how the devils think pretty much um i'm not involved with that stuff anymore actually um uh, you know, where I work in a CPA firm, it's very, very much uh, Bible studies and that stuff I'm into. But, you know, that's what the, the guy's into. He's like really super, super honest. But uh, I'm not saying that the other people I did work for weren't honest, but they were pretty much, um, you know, money was the God, you know. <laughs> that's really what it was. And I was the I was the guy shoveling the gold into the freaking safe, you know, and keeping the stuff moving. But uh, with Trump, uh, you know, one thing, a big question I always had, is he going to be holding the bag and when the economy goes down? Now, here's, Trump is not dumb. He's a shrewd guy. I know, like, some of his critics, and I have to agree with this. I forgot who the, some of his critics were, but they're high up in finance. Actually, Stern, he went at the Stern School of Business. Um, some of his critics have said he's a BS artist. I know he is a BS artist, but so is everybody on the top. They're not just intelligent, they're not just shrewd, they're not just great orators, they they BS too, I mean, they're, you know, they scam a little bit. Now, that's not saying it's nothing really wrong with that, because that's pretty much how they all are. So I know, like, when he was getting elected, he was more or less, you know, everybody's thinking, yeah, make America great. I know he's telling us a lot of stuff we want to hear, but he is pretty legit. So he's playing a kind of a game between, like, um, the powers and, you know, what he can do. He's not, you know, he's not freaking gonna be able to do everything and you know i don't know if, you know what are you gonna do i mean what are you gonna do about this so one of the things i always had the question was is trump gonna be holding the bag now one of the things i think you know and this is very much related to silver because i personally think the economy is screwed no matter how you look at it because of the debt situation in a trade imbalance situation although trump's addressing that stuff but the debt situation still going up ex exponentially He's still feeding the, um, you know, the military-industrial complex. Now, I notice the reason he's doing that, because he wants to stay alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, really. You know? I mean, he's got all the Wall Street guys in his cabinet and stuff. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, is a plus where things are probably going to keep going for maybe a little while longer. I don't really expect him to continue on ad finitum, though. And uh, there is going to be a time... If he gets reelected, he's definitely going to get. He's going to definitely be holding a bag. He might be holding a bag before 2020 when everything comes down. Because as we go down this road, we're actually going down the road to nowhere. There's no way around it. Now, as far as the younger generation, like old girl here is like one of the, you know, millennial Hillary supporters worshiping the skull. They got no future, man. I don't care if they went to Berkeley University and they got 12 degrees and all this, you know, college degrees. You got to know hands-on stuff. That's been always one of my, you know, things on this channel is I try to put some hands-on videos on there, not just talk about something. Um, and also some of the stuff I know about health, which I know is legit. You know, one thing I keep emphasizing in every silver video is the real power of silver is the actual element itself, the colloidal silver and the ionic silver. The ionic silver helps uh, 
uh, the body produced stem cells in required amounts. Man, if you could produce all the stem cells you need, hey, you're going to regenerate like brand new all the time. Colloidal silver also is a very powerful antimicrobial. People in general, if they knew about this, the demand for silver would be off the freaking charts, and it wouldn't be enough to go around if everybody was making colloidal ionic silver and all. I don't know if you understand why the people that push this stuff, which I'm not really, I'm just kind of, you know, I know it's a smart thing, but I'm not involved in brokerage accounts for silver. And I'm not a bullion dealer or anything like that. I think it's a smart thing. But I think the smartest thing about it is from the health aspect. If people actually push that angle and everybody got some silver, oh, God, the price would go through the roof without talking about the dollar going down and all this type of stuff because everybody would be wanting to have it. As a matter of fact, if you put silver on um, in a bandage, and you keep that bandage like wet with colloidal silver where the wound is, that wound will heal up exponentially better, not just because of the antimicrobial effects, but because it's causing the body to produce stem cells right where the injury was. It'll actually regenerate tissue exactly the way it was. That's actually been, that was originally discovered by Dr. Robert Otto Becker, but he didn't really realized what it was. He was thinking, you know, it only worked with this silver electrode. He found out later on it was actually the silver ions that were actually helping the body produce stem cells. That's what was really going on. It wasn't actually the microelectricity was doing it per se. So old girl here is saying, enjoy Coca-Cola. What is she saying over here? But uh, riding on a motorcycle. But, you know, I look at it like this. People are, you know, you know, I'm okay with some, you know, it's... The problem with society today is what I'm looking at today is like, you know, here's the old days. You know, you got on something, you did something physical. Today, activity is on your computer, which I'm getting kind of pissed off at too sometimes because doing this YouTube and all the videos, it takes a lot of time to do these things. I want to be out there doing, you know, the wires on my uh, mission wires on my El Camino right now. I started doing, but, eh, you know, this eats up time too. We spend too much time. I like the computer, you know, because if I got to get parts for my Harley, um, you know, I can just put the part number in there off my freaking factory authorized service manual and parts manual, and it comes up, and there's J&P Cycles. Man, they got the, they got the part. You couldn't do that way back before. You know, you had to go to the place and see if they got it, and you look it up in the catalog, and pain in the ass. Now I just go in there, click, 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 and I buy with PayPal, and I'm done. I mean, a computer has got some freaking uses, but then there's a lot of people out there that just play games on computers all freaking day. And we got an economy. This is what I'm bringing up. You know, when they say the GDP is a certain number, you know, it could be GDP for, you know, if we're generating sales on computer games and some idiot's buying all these apps and they got sales, what the hell are they producing? Nothing. If you're selling all this electronic crap, that people just sitting on there all day, like, you know, doing nothing. What the hell is that? What I mean, you see, the GDP is up because you got a dollar number. Or say you got a bunch of professionals charging each other money. Or say you got a bunch of freaking uh, psychs and social workers making all this money where it used to be mom doing all that, you know? And it, mom got nothing, you know? You know, that's what the mothers are like in revolt now. But you know what I'm saying? You got a GDP number. Even you got to look at a number. You know, I always look at the GDP number like if it's real, it's like we're producing our actual hard goods that we need. Or we're growing our crops. Or we're producing electricity. Or we're mining for minerals. That's GDP. See, that's why, you know, even when you're looking at these economic numbers, oh, the GDP went up. Even if they lie with it, it doesn't tell you every damn thing. In other words, um, you know... In other words, if they lie with the numbers and they fudge the numbers, that's one thing. But even if they don't fudge the numbers, you got to look into what the hell that GDP is. Now, I think the real problem is today that nobody's actually hands-on. You know, people don't even have basic survival skills. Now, i got another channel out there that's real small. It's got the word in it, survival, American-Russian survival, right? And, um, you know, because it's got the word survival in it, I don't think the powers at YouTube like that. If I said American-Russian prepping or American-Russian... I don't know, happy togetherness or something. They probably would be okay with that, but said survival, it's a dirty word. But, you know, what I'm saying is people today, you know, like technology is great, but they don't freaking use it for the right stuff. Now, also, the one of the problems we got to do to, today is people invest in silver. Mm, 
You know what they're doing? Electronic. That's all garbage. I'll guarantee you that. One thing, you know, and you got the FDIC guarantees your accounts up to hundred thousand dollars. They don't guarantee your brokerage accounts. You know what's going on today? Yeah, the fiat money system, okay, is going down, 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 right? In other words, since nineteen thirteen the dollar's only worth a fraction of what it was worth back in nineteen thirteen. Fine, we know this, right? But you know what's holding everything up is the stock market. It's all related to the insurance companies. It's all related to the pensions. You know what happened when the stock market went down? One of the biggest insurance companies that went down in 2008 was AIG, right? Remember that? That's why the next time we got a freaking implosion, it's not going to be a bank run. It's going to be a stock market problem. And that's related to insurance companies and pensions and everything else and how everything's inter interrelated with investments. And when it comes right down to it, you know, what the hell is it? It's fluff, you know? I mean, some people say, oh, you're going to make a lot of money when the freaking stock market goes down. Yeah, maybe. Somebody is. But I guarantee it's not going to be you because you're not going to be one of the inside guys. When everybody loses out, some fat cat's going to make out. You know, my my thing is hands-on. Hands-on silver, hands-on motorcycles, hands-on freaking food and and, and, uh, and uh, hands-on Ivanka if I could ever get my hands on her. You know, God. Anyway, but in the meantime, most people are drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, it's like, you know, they, even the stuff they got with, you know, I know a lot of stuff out there on YouTube is fairly accurate. You know, even the conspiracy stuff. I know they trounced Alex Jones. Uh, Alex Jones, I just want to point out about him. He is not somebody I totally trust in all the way. The one thing I didn't like about Alex Jones was his delivery method. He was too, uh, he almost made whatever he was saying that was true look really bad by the way he delivered it. The David Knight guy he, that worked for him was way better. You know that? I'm not even 100%, but you know what? He's probably pretty legit because they got rid of him. And one of the things I can also say about Trump, although I was a little always kind of suspicious of him, he's probably pretty smart for playing the angle he is because it's the reality of the world is he can only do so much. The fact is that he's, he's still around and he's they're pissed off at him. He's, he's legit. You know, he's legit. He's as legit as he can get. Uh, it's not like he's perfect. And it's not that even if he is perfect, he can't do what everything he's doing. He's got to compromise. There's no way you can go in there like the white and shining army and go, hey, you're my enemies. And, yeah, hmm, keep very, that's that's drinking the Kool-Aid, too. You know, if you're out there, you, you got to have, you got to compromise when you're in a political situation, no matter what, you know. i got to compromise on YouTube. I can't tell you everything. And there's a lot of stuff I wish I could tell you, man. You know, they got their parameters. I mean, it's not like I'd be against their community guidelines, but... You know, I, I'm smart enough to know that even if I'm not against their community guidelines, if I say something they don't like, they're, they're going to say it's against their community guidelines. So I, I only kind of beat around a bush. But I can tell you, if you really want to know what the elite are doing, and that's really a lot of times what you silver light want, holders want to know, look at the results of what they do. You know, they say they're pro this. You know, they're pro this and they're pro that. But then look at the results of it. I don't want to give you too many hints. I'll give you one hint. You know, they say they're pro this and that with immigration of certain type of people. And look what they did to Gaddafi and Saddam. And look what they did to those countries. They're not really pro that. They, you could apply this to everything. You see? They're, they're freaking shrewd guys, man. And, and Trump's dealing with this stuff. The guy, I think he's pretty damn legit. But, uh, you know, what you got to do is you got to actually be a little bit like Gumby and flexible and looking over both shoulders. Just like... You can't rely on technology. Like if you're on a motorcycle, if you got mirrors, she doesn't even have mirrors, you know. you got to look over. Even if you want the mirrors and you're changing lanes, you don't just rely on a mirror to change when you change lanes. You look over your shoulder. Make sure. That's the same thing with, you know, physical things and physical assets. You want to stick with the physical because that's the reality. Everything else is freaking Kool-Aid, man. I mean, it works when it works. Fine, you know. I mean, I think one of these days everything's going to implode. Now, Trump is also smart with getting with, getting in with Israel. I think they ought to put the Confederate flag with the Israeli flag. I know, like, the uh, League of the South probably wouldn't like that. You know, I got a comment on that, man. I saw a video with the League of the South. They're freaking burning the Israeli flag. And I was like, you guys are so freaking, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm all against Soros, okay? But I'm not against Netanyahu in Israel, okay? I mean, I could call the SPLC, you know, the Soros thing, whatever. The Soros, uh, um, what do you call it? Phony phony lawyer carpetbaggers, SPLC. I could criticize the hell out of that. But, you know, 
you got to be, it's just like everything, you know, when you get down these conspiracy trails, some people go a little too far, and they don't separate, you know, the good from the bad, you know, I mean, you know, I could tell you, the, the Pelosi, de Blasio, and Cuomo got nothing in common with the average Italian, I'm half Italian, right, half Italian, half Confederate, right, so I mean, just like, you know, Schumer and Feinstein and uh, Bloomberg got nothing in, ap- in common with the average Jew, you know what I'm saying? That's the same kind of deal. I mean, we're all actually, you know, we're all really very pro-American all the way. Um, and uh, I think Trump is very smart in a lot of things he's doing. He's a lot freaking better than Obama. But I want to get on, even though this is not related to silver, I've got to freaking put this out here. Because one of the most important things we got going today, I know one of the things that's trampling our rights left and right is through the power of money, which controls the media, like the Communist Network, News Network. And the power of money is through the Federal Reserve and the IRS, the 16th Amendment, and all the taxation, fin- fin- you know, finagling things they got, like sales tax that started during the Great Depression, gasoline stock tax that started during the Great Depression. Why did those taxes start during the Great Depression? Because the government was going broke. So what did they do? They taxed the people who were even really more broke. You know? Now, I want to point out that the real thing we're up against is not exactly the government, but actually it, it's the people that control the government and use the tool, the government as a tool against the people. That's why we have a constitution and a republic of limited government. So this is from Daniel Webster, you know, the one with the dictionary, right? Way back. Hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and the Republic for which it stands. Miracles do not cluster in what happened once in 6,000 years of human recorded history may not happen again. Hold on to the Constitution. If the American Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout not just the United States, but, but throughout the world. So the First and the Second Amendment, especially, and, uh, you know, First Amendment is, you know, on YouTube. Actually, i got to give credit to YouTube because YouTube actually does have a lot of divergent opinions on here versus what you get out of mainstream, lamestream media. You know, they couldn't pay me to watch freaking, uh, uh, what do you call that, cable TV. I know YouTube keeps putting it up there. You want you want some free cable TV? You couldn't even pay me to watch that. I don't even want, I don't watch even the main YouTube channels. I watch all the little guys. I want to look at real people. I don't want to look at freaking prepackaged garbage, you know? Now... I've been, I've been having a lot of fun on my videos with this Confederate stuff. I've been having, you know, Hagako gasoline. That's gonna, that's one of my patches and stuff. And we're going to, you know, I'm, I got this. Uh, this is like uh, from this place, Bulletproof Inc. That's where it's coming from. I bought this. It's going on my motorcycle. You know, I put some motorcycles in here. I'm taking Kankles, you know, Hang hang the Witch, Hill the Beast, Kankles, sticker off the oil tank. I'm going to put this on here, powered by moonshine, high-octane redneck fuel. <laughs> it's coming from Australia. I figure, what the hell? We'd have some fun, you know? Anyway, but, uh, you know, what I'm looking at, here's an old, here's a sports, uh, looks like a chain drive, so, I don't know what that is, is it ni- um, 89 or 90 or something? Or maybe it's converted to a chain drive. But anyway, um, got a different front end on it, too. 21 inch wheel. But uh, the deal is, people are not really thinking hard, like, as far as, you know, what's coming up? That's one of the biggest problems going. I think a lot of people are so poor right now that they probably don't even, they're, they're like in a hole that they're not even thinking about, you know, um, what the, what they could do for the future. You know, most people live paycheck to paycheck. Now, I'm going to give you one very hands-on, very strong, practical piece of financial advice that affects everybody, basically, and how you blow money. I'm like a type of guy, like I'm a penny pincher in one way, and in another way, I buy big items. I could tell you, I look at the average, let's call them redneck, whatever the hell it is, or just anybody, it could be somebody in the city. They blow more money going to convenience stores, buying a bag of chips, smokes, a beer, whatever. I mean, smoking cigarettes can eat up money, drinking beer can eat up money, but if you're going to do that, you go to a discount place. You go to a place and buy volume. I've seen so many people make, you know, a $2 trip in gasoline to go get a a highly marked up piece of freaking stuff they want because they want it right now. I buy everything discount. And I've seen people, they literally blow two or $300 a month doing these little bullshit freaking charges. 
You don't realize it because I realize it because as an accountant, I always realize how these little numbers can add up really big numbers real fast. You want to shave down a little extra garbage, and then when you buy something, buy a hard asset that, you know, not, maybe not just silver, but you could buy invest in tools. You can invest in a motorcycle, for crying out loud. You can invest in, you know, fuel or generators or something like that. Hard assets. Um, technology. I used to be into technology basically when Microsoft was really coming on. I used to buy... I had, like, NT40 workstation instead of that crappy Windows 95. Uh, then I got, I was the first one on the block to get, uh, you know, Windows 2000 when it came out. I think it was in, I don't know, January 2000 or something. Whoa. Yeah. But you know what I do now? I go on uh, eBay, get refurbished stuff <laughs> from a reliable vendor out in Kentucky. And this refurbished stuff I've never had any problem with. And it's dirt cheap, and it's guaranteed four or five years. Plus, you know, I mean, uh, gimmicks are one thing. I mean, it, it's like it's not good if you're a gamer, but I'm not, not a gamer. I only use computers for, like, information, and I only use them for, like, purchases in whatever, cataloging, I don't know, the various parts of my motorcycle and my El Camino or something or my Suzuki. So um, I don't really, you know, I don't play games, and I think a lot of people that play games on computers are freaking wasting their damn time and money. They could be learning something else. You know, that's one of the problems we got with the millennial generation. They got they got addicted to this gaming garbage. I mean, I'm not talking about silver here, but it is related to it because that's why people do not invest in hard assets because they're not even hands-on people. They're like, you know, everything exists. It's like, you know, if you tell, uh, you know, some people like, hey, start a fire. Well, okay, I'll get my cell phone. I got an app here. I got a picture of a fire going. Well, is it giving you heat? No, you have to take the battery out and short it and make a spark and, you know, get get the fire going. So, I mean, people do not know practical things in the real world that could actually make them survive. Silver is going to be your survival metal. And what I think is more important than the financial aspect, because I know right now the price is way depressed. I know it's depressed artificially and all this garbage. And, you know, honestly, you look at, you know, one of the metals I could see that's super depressed right now is platinum. Look, platinum is like uh, I think most of the, most of it, or large percentage of it, the biggest platinum producer in the world is South Africa. With the economic sta- in- instability that's going on there in South Africa, and the outlook and what's going to happen with those mines, huh. yeah, I'd imagine not just gold, but platinum is going to go right through the roof. It's going to happen all at once. And you know what it'll do? It'll super spike and then crash again, just like all the metals always do. That's why I'm not really afraid to dump silver when it goes up. But I can tell you one thing. I was right about palladium. I know people don't. Where are you buying that palladium at under $200 an ounce? Well, it's 900 It's 900 now. I was the only one that freaking, I was the only one doing that stuff. And nobody, people tell me I was a jerk. I already know. But, you know, I look at the silver as a lifesaver. I'm gonna, I've been making some more of that um Colloidal silver, I put it in the cat food, I put it in the cat, uh, keep it fresh, I put it in the kitty, the kitty uh, water bowls, I drink some of it myself, and I look at it not just as an investment, but I look at it as like a health miracle. I feel great, man, I'm doing all kinds of garbage, and I feel like, you know, I'm like, I'm like a senior citizen, for crying out loud, but not exactly, man, I'm more like a 30-year-old senior, senior citizen or something, so, um, but anyway, you know, I just want to say that people are not, the reason they're not thinking about silver is because they're stupid. Most people, if you talk to anybody with any kind of wealth, say, hey, yeah, I'll tell you, I got some, you know, maybe they got some some jewelry that's got some silver in it or something like that. They don't think about it. They don't care. They live in a bubble. As a matter of fact, you know, if you look at when Rome fell, you know, some of the most wealthy people out there, they were trading gold in for like, you know, three-day-old moldy bread just so they can eat. That's what's going to happen to the wealthy. I hope not Ivanka, because Ivanka, you're a babe. <laughs> this chick's all right, man. I'll tell you what, if she was, you know, some people who say, you know, you don't like Hillary because she's a woman. Hillary's not a woman. She's a witch. <laughs> Ivanka, you're running for president. I don't even care what the hell you do, you know. You're just looking like that, I'd vote for you. I wouldn't vote for Kankles. No way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, getting on with some of the political stuff here, she says, I'm not anti-Democrat. 
not because I'm pro I'm anti Democrat, not because I'm pro Republican, but because the DNC represents a clear political ideology dangerous to the U.S. In other words, DNC is communist. That's what it is. Flat out communist. It's amazing how these guys today, you know, they're tearing down these, you know, noble Confederate statues and stuff like that, and they got Jake Guevara, the guy that shot people in the back of the head a bunch of times, and they're wearing that shirt. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Actually, you know, I don't want to say this too much because actually YouTube didn't like my video on it. There's one Confederate statue out there that is a bad guy. He's, he's, he's not Jefferson Davis and, and uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, Robert E. Lee. He, they're great guys, right? This one guy was Albert Pike. He's, they got his statue up there in D.C. right near the FBI and, uh, FBI and Abe Lincoln. He was not a good guy. But, you know, you've got to look him up on Wikipedia. Albert Pike. And you'll know why they got that one up there. Nobody's touching that statue. Nobody ever will. But that tells you what the elite really are. They're playing a scam, man. I, I don't want. I can't reveal it on here because YouTube will get mad. Because I can tell you, man. Every freaking social um, movement that's been going on for this human rights of this group and that group, the elite are really full of crap. They're freaking using everybody like a bunch of chumps. They want it. They want control. They're looking for communism all the way. And that communism, one of the planks of communism is, you know, the progressive tax and also the central bank. That's why they don't like silver. That's why they're depressing the price of silver. But is Trump going to get set up with, a, with an economic downfall? You know, I don't really know that because, you know what, I was thinking it was a sure bet that he was going to be set up with an economic downfall. But the fact that he allied himself with the Wall Street guys Actually, you know, some people criticize him for that, but that could have been a shrewd move because they're in with him, you know? Now, maybe if there's an economic downfall, these shrewd Wall Street guys are just going to make a load of money off it. That's the other side of it. Everybody else gets screwed. But I look at it like this. If there's an economic downfall, one industry you're going to see that's going to drop a lot is the real estate industry, which is one of the reasons I'm holding off on buying any kind of property up in Georgia or home up in Georgia, north, you know, north Georgia, right, up there in the mountains or even Tennessee. I already got the land up in Tennessee, but I'm figuring if there's going to be a, a, a fallout in the price, um, I must well wait. <laughs> Just buy it out right and then I'm gone. I'll be out of here and have to get it like a, a couple rides with a huge freaking rental truck and get up there and haul all my stuff up there, most of it in one shot. But that's, you know, that's the game I'm playing. Um, I do think that your next move after silver – going up and spiking, which you want to, you'll know when it's spiking, when everybody's out there saying it's going to the moon, it's going to go to $1,000 an ounce. It might go to at least 100 bucks an ounce, but I know I don't mind it at 70, 65, 70, it'll be gone, a lot of it. But I'll keep a lot of it around for health, too, because you can't replace it. There's no other metal in the world that has all these things that you can produce more stem cells in the body and all this kind of garbage. So, anyway, um, just, you know, it's kind of a psychological update I'm doing on here. But you gotta re- you got to realize that, you know, nothing is, you know, a, a, you know, when you're talking about one subject, it's not like it's just this one little thing. Everything is interrelated. you got to look at everything that's coming from left field, right field, and center field. And, you know, what the whole mosaic is. Obviously, yeah, we're going to the United States. I know Trump's got that thing, make America great again. I don't have a MAGA hat or anything like that. <laughs> I'm like, if America's going to get great, fine. It's going to get great. And he's doing a lot of good stuff. But, you know, I also think the trends that have been in place for such a long time are so problematic that the United States is going to hit a, a hard reset time. And at that time, silver's going to go way the hell up. Trump may be holding the bag. He does have a lot of enemies, and the, way, the best way to get rid of them is to um, – have the economy go down because presidents do not get reelected during times of bad economic times. It's almost all the time, unless there's a major conflict going on and they can blame it on, you know, the enemy to cause the economic times to be bad. So, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what can possibly happen is, is a number of things. And actually nobody freaking knows. Nobody knows. But I think that Trump, since he aligned himself with a lot of wall street people, that's a plus in his favor. If he did not align himself with a lot of Wall Street people and have them in his cabinet, the economy would have already crashed. It would have already been done with. Because they would have wanted to get rid of him as fast as possible because they weren't inside on the inside 
the loop. So by him compromising, it's it's not the stupidest thing in the world to do. The guy's not stupid, obviously. Um, but, you know, he's he's kind of part and parcel, but he's not, not exactly. He's like, uh, <laughs> he's an honorable guy amongst the, the big crooked guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what the hell he is. You know, that's how I can look at it. I mean, it's not Santa Claus. Like, people are thinking, oh, this guy's going to come in here with his white horse and fix everything. No, he's not going to do that. But he did bring his daughter in. So, I mean, I have to say that's that's one smart thing. So, you know, Ivanka is a, a cheery point. I couldn't imagine having Chelsea in there going, bleh, 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 bleh. Chelsea, you're nasty. Anyway, even with all your freaking operations, this Ivanka is pretty, man. She would look great on a Harley, wouldn't she? I mean, really. I'd like to see her in some leathers and stuff. and <laughs> some Gold chains and stuff, whatever. <laughs> no tattoos. You don't need any of that garbage. But, uh... She look hot on the Harley, man, for sure. But, um, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, people are, you know, we are definitely, there's no doubt if Trump is elected in 2020, there's no way impossible that the United States is going to continue on without having a hard economic reset before, you, you know, 2024. That's impossible. I'll say that's flat out impossible. I think it's a fairly good bet that it's going to happen before Trump even gets to 2020. And that's going to be the way they're going to try to get him not reelected. And then you're going to see communism to the fact, the max. But on the opposite side of this, no matter what goes on with the elite, there's various kinds of elite. I mean, I could talk about, you know, you know, people always talk about the Rothschilds. Actually, I'm probably related to uh, Lionel Light, Nathan Rothschild. There's a good chance he's my third great-grandfather. <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever. Hey, he's a good guy. But, uh, you know, the other the side of it is a lot of people don't even understand, like, what goes on in Switzerland, what goes on in Italy. There's a lot of stuff going on, man. They seem to, like, pick on this one group with the, you know, Israelis or something. You know, I mean, they always pick on that group. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on in Japan. There's stuff going on in China. There's stuff going on in Russia. It's a lot of different elite, and they always think they're going to win. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's like when they take a risk and they go to, you know, when they change the status quo, you don't know what's going to happen. It's a whole new set of cards being dealt at you, man. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, back during the, the Punic Wars between Carthage and Rome, what happened? Did Carthage, Carthage thought they were definitely going to win. They looked like they were going to win. Roman, Rome got the bigger, biggest army they ever put together crushed inside of three hours when Hannibal used a double envelopment tactic against them. Eventually, Rome recovered. Took them decades. And eventually, they used those tactics against Carthage. You know, we don't know. You know, the Western elite, there's various kinds. And they're fighting amongst each other. I personally think, like this Q guy or whatever the hell he is, he's really like... Um, uh, a globalist, but with globalist with a flavor with America first. There's different types of globalists. Putin's a globalist. Uh, the Pope's uh, <laughs> Pope's a globalist. <laughs> they all are, man. You know? Um, that's why, you know, what do you do about it? When I look at it, it's like, well, I support these people. I didn't give nothing to Donald Trump. I was like, yeah, he's got $10 billion. Go do your own campaign. You know? I mean... <laughs> I get, you know, I, maybe I vote Republican. Do, do I give them money? Oh, hell no. I'll buy motorcycle parts before I do that crap. You crazy? I wouldn't give them no damn money. <laughs> you know? Um, and, um, you know, the Democrats and stuff, you know, I mean, I don't want to say, I can't say too much on here, man. But they're really, the Democrats, <laughs> both of them are corrupt. McCain is corrupt. Remember the McCain just died? He's corrupt as all hell. But, you know, that's one of the things with the silver. It's like you're telling them, you're giving, uh, you're giving the banks the middle finger. I mean, it's the one satisfaction you got there until, you know. It's like no matter what they, it's, it, it is a hedge against the dollar. It is doing lousy as crappy as an investment right now in dollars. But I have been telling people, if you look way back, you look at all my palladium videos, there's been, I've been telling people about palladium, and now it's way the hell up there. And I don't know if it's going to continue to go up. But I expect it to continue to go up because of tensions with Russia, who's a major palladium producer. But right now, I think platinum might be one of the best bets going because of South African problems. Even though I'm talking about silver here, but I would definitely buy some silver. And 
maybe extra because when people find out about the medical purposes of silver, that I, that could be that could make it go explosive in demand. It's amazing how people ignore this crap. It's because it's not advertised enough. I mean, if you put ionic silver on it and keep it wet on, on a wound, you, it'll it'll heal up without a scar because it's enabling the body to produce stem cells in that area. That's it's, it's only one thing that does that, silver. I mean, these, these medical people, you might find out 100 years from now, they'll say, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, well, I hope that I'll live, I'll, I'll outlive my doctors and their kids and their grandkids. So in the meantime, I know what I'm doing. Anyway, over and out, kind of a psychological update, but, you know, I went on it kind of long, and I did bounce around a lot of topics, but whatever, fine, you know? You know, I'm telling you, just sitting on your ass and waiting for fucking eggs to grow into chickens or something, which is like what you're doing with silver, not the only thing you should be doing. You should you should get some of the silver. Don't day trade silver. You never freaking, you'll screw up on that like crazy. Nobody day trades silver. Do not do that. It's a long-term investment, but it's also a long-term health investment. Nothing can replace silver for some of the properties it has. I mean, I've seen antimicrobial stuff out there, but I've never seen anything that can help the body produce more stem cells. That's the ionic silver in the required amount that's needed. That's why it doesn't just heal from antimicrobial effects. It actually causes the body to produce stem cells right at the area where you got that ionic silver applied. And if you keep it wet with the ionic silver where that wound is, it, it, it puts it right back to where like brand new again without a scar. <laughs> and, you know, one of these days, you know, Dr. Robert Otto Becker figured this out back in the 70s. And then he got defunded. <laughs> you know why that was, right? Because just about anything you do out there that's really too good, they don't want you. They don't want people to know about it. Obviously, Soros don't even know about it. Look at his crusty, wrinkled butt. <laughs> He's gonna be around for a hundred years old, but he, he probably doesn't even know all the health stuff I know. But you know, we'll call the SPLC the the this the, what is that? The SPLC, the Soros phony lawyers, uh, carpetbaggers. <laughs> we'll call them that, and. Um, you know, anyway, over and out, and enjoy your uh, Coca-Cola, co-whatever co the hell that is. Over and out. Have a nice day.